I'm Martin Anderson in Studio B, where live sessions are brought to you by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company and the listeners of this public radio station, where we love celebrating the best in local music. And we've got another best of the region here. It's Drunken Prayer. Welcome. Hey, hey thanks. Thanks for having me back. Morgan Gear is back, and you've brought someone special with you. Krista DeMaio. She's mm-hmm. going to sing with me today. Excellent. Excellent. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I know I've seen some like blogs and stuff, some posts on, on your website, mm-hmm. Morgan, uh, and her name has popped up a time or two of yeah. being on the road and stuff as a little family traveling unit. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the she's a lot of the background vocals on the, the last record. Excellent. As well, so it works out. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> All right, well, let's work it out now. Let's hear a song. All right. town so I moved to another town I hate what they did to my town so I moved to another town I thought the change would do me good Cordelia understood the ghosts were creeping in on me and all my friends the house where we grew up is not our home Cordelia elsewhere will I roam I hate what they did to my town so I moved to another town I hate what they did to my town so I moved to another town Hot and damn, I want to be free Cordelia, fetch my wings Black cats are on the trail Of this lonesome whippoorwill The house where we live is not our home Cordelia, elsewhere will I roam I hate what they did to my town, so I moved to another town. This older house ain't gonna haunt itself from PDX to the AVL. The old folks pitch and moan, do not renovate our home, but that house. Was built to flip and play Cordelia It's time we said goodbye Goodbye, goodbye And I hate what they did to my town So I moved to another town I hate what they did to my town So I moved to another town I hate what they did to my town, so I moved to another town.
That's Drunken Prayer on WNCW. Morgan Gear is singing uh, that tune. That, that That's one of our favorites here at NCW. Uh, your voice is in fine form this morning, Morgan. <laughs> that's funny. You know, in the wintertime, <laughs> really? Are you, are you like, gosh, I'm feeling froggy? Well, you sound it, great. it was like an hour drive over here. We yeah. live in West Asheville, so uh-huh. we, we sang all the way. There you the go. <laughs> you warm it up. It's yes. a little chilly in here. It's a little chilly outside, but sounding good. nice. Yeah, I'm glad you all had some coffee here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good. One thing that, I forgot. That opens. Well, we got you covered on that one. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and I just heard just a we heard just a taste of Krista De Mayo singing there. Not enough because that sounded really good. I want to oh, hear thanks. more. <laughs> that's the only part I sing on in that song. Yeah, but okay. it is one of my favorite songs too. It's nice. Yeah, that's that's how she warms up. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's, like it's a, more like a meow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's neat to to get to know arrangements of songs and where mm-hmm. sometimes there'll be just a little bit of a, of a part, whether it's an instrument or all of a sudden you hear this chorus showing up for just a little bit. It's like, well, what was that? Comes yeah. and it's gone. That's one of Morgan's best talents is he's got a musical mind. He comes from a musical family, but, you know, I, I'm a listener of music. I love music and I have, you know, musical background, but he's got a great mind of how things should fit in places. Like he can hear it before he actually hears it. Yeah. Kind of blows my mind a little bit. Right. But yeah, yeah, he's he just tells me what to sing and how to sing it. And I appreciate that because I don't have that intuition on my own, you know. It's like magic, isn't it? It really this, this is. is someone yeah. that actually makes music can do that. Because I'm like you, Krista. I'm a listener of music. I can tell what's good and what's bad. Right. But I can't choose it first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like magic to me, too. Oh, is it? <laughs> when I put my hand in that top hat, I'm not always sure it's going to be a rabbit <laughs> that, that comes out, but it's something. <laughs> That's a good analogy or metaphor of, of how, how music is made, how lyrics come about. You put your hand in a hat. And, and just know that you're pulling magic out. What it happens to be is let it, you know, let... Let the the world dis- let the universe decide. What yes, that is. yes. <laughs> well, well, that last song. What town was that about? <laughs> well, the AVL. So it is Asheville yeah. and, and Portland. I'd been going back and forth. I still go back and forth to uh, um, Portland a lot. It's still kind of a second home. I grew up here. By the way, I went to Owen High School. Yeah. Um, we lived. My mom worked at Warren Wilson College, and then I moved out to Portland for a long time. And I still have. I still have a, um, a small apartment out there in a friend of mine's basement. Um, so I'm there a good portion of the year, but it's I couldn't afford to live there by any stretch of the imagination, which makes Asheville a, a little bit seem a little more affordable, <laughs> but they're, they're starting to catch up. So it's like I wrote that song, We Were Living in Montford and About to Move. It's like we're never going to live in Montford again yeah. <laughs> after after this, you know, and this kind of this idea, this musical chairs of where can artists go live before it gets too expensive for them to live there anymore, and it's like, and we were fortunate enough to be able to move at all. Some people are just, just like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, it's go live out in the middle of the country or mm-hmm. or something, you know, when you're. When you're kind of like your center of gravity, a, a scene's center of gravity depends on people being able to afford to live there. But it's a resonant message because every time he plays it in any place, people just, you know, one, he plays it at the end of a show because usually people really gravitate towards that song. Hmm. And there is a connection. People, you know, in Austin and in Sebastopol. I had a guy come up to me in Dublin who's like, yeah. oh. the guy, laddie, you've been reading my mail. You know, <laughs> this is how I feel. Yeah. Same thing there, huh? It, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, I don't know. I, it's, I, I think it's just like a, a scooping out of the middle class kind of, kind of thing. Because it takes money to be a musician, unfortunately, to do it, to go out and play. You know, it's, it's something you can just pull out of the ether in your living room. But if you decide to try to do this and go out and do it, even on a local level, it takes takes money and resources and, and time, and not everybody has those things, no matter how talented you are. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm very, very lucky to be able to do this at, at all. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Do, do you seek out, like, grants and do that kind of work? Do you have a manager that kind of works on that? I've got a, a DIY um, guy? Mm, well, I've, I do have a manager and booking agent um, who's also, lucky enough, is also in the drive-by truckers <laughs> um, in Mississippi, where we've been working on this gospel record. Um and he's got tons of great ideas as far as just like uh, for f- kind of fun promotional things. Um, he knows a lot of people, and he's just got a lot of great ideas and a lot of enthusiasm. Um, which when when I'm doing it all myself, it's it's it it gets a little draining. It 
it's like I take a take away from the making music part to make room for the promotion part. Yes. Which is, I, and I don't mind the promotion part. I like making posters and doing graphic design and stuff like that. But the, add that in a actually booking shows and emailing and logistics and getting the band together and everything. It's just it, it tends to zap some of the enthusiasm out of the actual playing of the music. <laughs> You know, when you you know exactly how the sausage is made. Right. I can see that. I can yeah. see that. There's a lot involved in, in someone's success. Yeah, you know. Or trying. Or it's just trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That to me is a success, just being able to do it at all. Like I said, a lot of people, who knows what kind of talent is sitting in their bedroom right now who, who can't do anything about it. <laughs> like, I, like how frustrating is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm... I'm I'm definitely pr- pretty lucky to have Asheville and Portland as my two like little spots too. Some of the greatest places on the the planet. Yeah, that's so, good. Yeah. Uh, today's Donald Fagan's birthday. He's big oh. seventy five. Uh, well, you know, Steely Dan and all. We what? saw him at the um, Biltmore House. Okay. The Steely, when yeah. They came, when they came yeah, that's through. right. That oh was, yeah, that, was, that was crazy to hear. Yeah, there at the. They were Biltmore. hilarious. Well, he said something to, to that effect that it's it, somewhat a musician's success. It's. I'm totally paraphrasing, but it's it's only partially about how good they are. It's mm-hmm. also about just who they know, and that sounds so uh, like superficial or yeah. something. But it really is about like you know how you can convince others to be on your side and to to get them on your plate yeah. to work for you. There's a lot of luck involved, but the the, the the cliche of the harder you work, the luckier you get too. You know, uh, you put a you you put a big enough um, bullseye on your back for people to want to work with you. Meaning, you show up, you show up coherent. Um, and and be flexible to work with. People are going to want to work with you, too. Um, that's another nice thing about Portland is just such a, a bigger town. There's just tons of people around, sitting around waiting to play. Yeah. So a lot of that, if you're, you know, if you're kind of a jerk, it doesn't matter how good you are. I'd rather play with someone. I'd rather, chemistry to me means more than technical ability. But yeah. It's also like the kind of music I play doesn't require <laughs> a whole lot of virtuosity. Uh, we're talking with Drunken Prayer here on WNCW. He's checking off all the boxes because he's shown up. He's coherent. <laughs> Sean, so far, is he easy to work with? So far, I find him easy to work with. Brenda, yeah, I think it looks yeah. All right. 